This video is in response to Epic Name Bros' latest video, which is titled Organic Difficulty. If you haven't watched that yet, then what the fuck are you doing? Don't watch this. It's not going to make any sense. If you have watched that, then feel free to carry on. And if you're simply watching because you're a subscriber of mine, then you're sexy. In short, what Ian B's video was getting at is the differences between the two different kinds of difficulties, if you break them down into only two different kinds. The organic one, where the difficulty takes place within the game, um, instead of the other one, which is selecting the difficulty, easy, normal, hard, so to speak. Um, there is obviously a difference between the two, and aside from wondering what we think of them, he was also wondering if we knew any good examples and how they might apply to Dark Souls, as there was an interview with somebody's name, who I forget now, saying that they uh, might cater more to the casual gamer in having an easy mode in future Souls titles. That's all speculative as far as I'm concerned. The article doesn't really say that. As far as which difficulty is better, I think they actually both have a place in gaming, and I also think that it could work in a Souls game. Now, what's nice about having the different selectable difficulties is, especially with a game like Mass Effect 3 I'll use for my example, when I first play that game, or actually, it's better to say any of the three Mass Effect games, because I did the same thing for all three of them, but when I first played any of those three games, I always want to start out on the easiest difficulty, and some people might, uh, might slant me for that, but the main reason is because I want to experience the story and the, uh, the different plot elements of the game rather than the brutal difficulty. I will get to the insanity difficulty later. I have for all three games, if it was even in the first game. I can't even remember. I didn't like the first game that much. But uh, that's besides the point. In this sense, the selecting difficulty method does seem better because it gives players the definitive option as to how they want to play. And that's definitely preferred over being surprised. At least it seems like it should be. But then I think of the Souls games, and I don't know exactly what I'm getting into. That's not a great example because we all know they're going to be super hard. But we don't know for sure what the difficulty is going to be, what we're going to be faced against. And especially if a company developer takes the time to fully balance the different difficulties, then it's a great way to go about it. That said, as ENB pointed out in his video, there are definitely times when uh, the games aren't fully developed and things seem out of whack as you get into the harder difficulties. Or maybe they're out of whack in the easier difficulties. Either way. That brings us to the organic difficulty, which in my opinion exists in all games in one level or another, but particularly those that don't have a selectable difficulty. And this is all dependent on how you play the game and what happens and how much you know about it going in. Just for a perfect example, since most of my subscribers are going to know about Dark Souls in the first place, when you play Dark Souls, if you, say, know where certain weapons are, certain armors, know how to upgrade, know where the upgrade stones are, or even at worst case, have a mule and have everything so the game's not all that challenging, then the difficulty has been amped down per your decisions. But if you don't know any of that stuff and you're fresh faced to the game, it can be one hell of a ride and perhaps the hardest game you've ever played. And that brings us to the less organic organic difficulty, if that makes any sense, and I think it will if you keep following me, in which the different choices of difficulty are hardwired into the game. They're pre-programmed decisions, as in the NPCs to be summoned in Dark Souls. They can change the game's difficulty depending on your playstyle and so on, but they're not so organic that it's just natural happenstance. They're definite decisions. You can know to do them. And that brings me to the examples of the different difficulties, and I've already given it away with the examples I used, but uh, Mass Effect, in my opinion, has the best non-organic difficulties. From easy to insanity, the balancing definitely seems to be the best. And sometimes the game is still kind of brutal, but it always feels playable. It always feels like you can possibly win, despite that you've died 20 times in a row at this stupid Krogan with a shotgun. And then as far as the organic difficulty goes, I definitely have to tip my hat to the Souls series, and not just that, but other From series as well, like Kingsfield, 
to where it's all dependent on the different items that you find and the different paths that you take and you can make the game harder or less hard on yourself depending on if you level up or not. Now uh, in Kingsfield obviously it's not quite as big an option, you will automatically level up, but in the Souls series you don't automatically level up and you can choose not to and there are videos of people getting through the entire game at the starting level. That, to me, is the most organic difficulty possible. You can start off from scratch and go through the entire game, or you can make yourself level 700 or whatever it is, that the cap of Dark Souls, and then get through the game and it'll be significantly easier. You can not upgrade your equipment at all, or you can upgrade it to the max. Whichever choices you make, that changes the difficulty. One different upgrade choice changes the difficulty. To me, that is the ultimate definition of organic difficulty. However, I don't believe that the Souls series has the best non-organic organic difficulty. The NPCs being summoned and such is not a great example in my opinion, because it's too obvious and the bosses do get harder if you have people helping you, even NPCs helping you. But as far as non-organic organic difficulties go, I have two great examples. I've uh, recently rediscovered the Kingsfield example I'm about to list, in which as you're playing the game, you will automatically gain strength and magic bonuses as you use them. And that's the trick, is you have to use them and your strength will get stronger. Just for example, you keep swinging a weapon, keep killing things, you'll do better with that weapon, so to speak. Your strength will go up. And that's obviously built into the game, it happens no matter what, so it's not organic, but it's also organic in that you don't really plan on it. You could swing two times and get a strength up, or you could swing a thousand times and then get a strength up. So that adds an element of organic in it, as in you're just going to go through and play the game, and yet it will happen, therefore it's not quite as organic. The other great example I can think of is actually the Assassin's Creed series. The latter games uh, are better at it, but uh, you can do all the missions and all the side quests and all that stuff and upgrade all your assassins and have a bunch of guys to help you kill the enemies as you go along through the game because you summon them and they rain down from the sky or shoot arrows. Whatever it is they do, you have assassins you summon in to fight the guys for you and you don't have to do all that, you don't have to do all the side quests, and you can still progress through the game just fine. There's not really a problem to finish them, they're not that hard of games. But if you have these assassins, it becomes a much easier game, lessening the difficulty, and that's built in, you can specifically go through all the side quests to get them. So that brings us down to the big question, whether or not I think having selectable difficulties, easy, normal, hard, will work in the next Souls game. And I'm going to be on the opposing side of the fence for a change on this and say that I do think it would work, but I have a specific reason why. You see, as I go through playing games, I often find myself wishing that I could unlock a God-type mode. Not necessarily invincibility, but just a super kick-ass, be able to kill everything and maul and just feel fucking invincible kind of mode. And no games really have that. A few do, but most games do not. And specifically with titles I've been playing recently, Mass Effect 3, Dark Souls, I've really wanted to unlock that special mode in which I just can go through and maul everything. And I was even complaining to people about how, you know, they should really add in a mode after you've completed the game, and maybe not even just completed the game, but after you've completed it at its hardest, in which you can unlock this god, well, godly mode. I want to use the word godly instead of god, because I, uh, I want to make it clear that I don't mean invincibility, I just mean kicking ass. Um, that's how I think it would work for Dark Souls. You see, you wouldn't have an easy mode right off the bat. In fact, you wouldn't even earn it from beating the game once. Let's just say something crazy so that it's really difficult to get, but you have to say beat New Game Plus 10 in order to unlock the super easy mode, the mode in which you go through as a god, maybe even as a special character. And I really do think that could work. And the same thing can be said about Mass Effect. 
you have to beat the game on insanity in order to unlock godly mode. I think that would be the greatest thing in the world. I would want that in every single game. It would make the ultimate achievement of beating the game on the hardest difficulty, the hair-pulling, mind-numbing difficulty, that much more rewarding. It would be a perfect payoff for having the harder difficulties if you could unlock a mode in which you got to kick ass that most people wouldn't earn. Well, anyway, that should be about it. Please let me know what you guys think, because, as you know, it's all about what you think. You guys are the whole reason that I keep making videos at this point. And, Ian B., if you also happen to watch this, please let me know what you think.